You're tuning into Black and White Sports on YouTube. The no holds barred truth on sports. The main event starts now. I'm back. Rudrance for Black and White Sports 2. Well, let's talk about the XFL. I've got a couple of different things. Wade Phillips has come out and slammed the NFL over ageism. Says they do not want them want him in the league. It seems like all he can think is over his age. Now, if I was an NFL team and I wanted a really damn good defensive coordinator, no doubt I would absolutely holler at Wade Phillips. I don't. I wouldn't care if he was seventy five or not. That's kind of shocking to me. Um, he was with the the uh, I believe it was the twenty nineteen. L.A. Rams, now L.A. Rams, and uh, performed very good. He's had some really damn good defenses over the years and led a bunch of teams to the playoffs. He was also, to be honest with you, I think kind of an underrated head coach. Uh, So we'll get to that, and uh, let's get to the XFL player, Quentin Dormady, because the league has reinstated him. This is very interesting. This was uh, yesterday. He was he was cut from the Orlando Guardians, and the league had booted him. And now they've brought him back, and nobody knows exactly quite what's going on here. Uh, this is Florio. He was giving the playbook, supposedly, to other teams. XFL reinstates player who was a cut for allegedly giving playbook to other teams. XFL 3.0 may not have significant ratings or attendance, but it certainly has some high drama. Via the New York Post, the league has reinstated a player who was released on Thursday for allegedly giving his team team's playbook to other teams. The Orlando Guardians quarterback had his pink slip revoked a day after being fired by the Guardians. So I guess he's back on the Guardians. The league is actively reviewing a personnel issue regarding a player on the Orlando Guardians who was released from the team yesterday afternoon. The XFL said in a statement, additional information on the situation was brought to the attention of the league overnight. And the league has reinstated the player while it conducts a formal investigation into the issue. The situation is under review and we will share more details regarding the findings as appropriate. That doesn't mean Dormady may be exonerated. It doesn't mean he won't be. It's definitely an issue of concern for the league to the extent that legal bets are being placed on hold for XFL games. Wow. Wow, that may actually be the leadingest uh, story, to be honest with you. Integrity becomes a critical uh, becomes critical to avoiding external scrutiny up to and including the prosecution of specific persons. If anyone is giving away playbooks or plays or other secrets to other teams, it undermines the re- whether the results of the games are legitimate, which invites serious questions about whether laws have been broken. Wow. Uh, we talked about yesterday about this actually being a scandal, a sure enough scandal. Um Man, his college his college uh, statistics just weren't very good, but I gotta I gotta give it up to him. He he's not doing bad in the NF uh, in the XFL. He's got a sixty six point seven percent completion percentage. He's twelve of eighteen. He's got one TD, two interceptions, a hundred and forty two yards, and he's in this platoon situation with DeAndre Francois, uh, which is sort of interesting. And there's a couple of these teams that are running this platoon situation. The uh, Houston uh, Roughnecks are doing it with Brandon Silvers and and Cole McDonald. Uh, Personally speaking, I don't like platoon situations at quarterback. I never have. Um, So I kind of believe that if you start running quarterbacks like that, then you may be really... You may really, you know, not be in a situation where you've got an actual legitimate quarterback on the team. Uh, He put up 1,282 yards and seven touchdowns at Tennessee in 2015 through 2017 before transferring to Houston where he barely saw the field. 
In 2019, the quarterback landed at Central Michigan where he had 2,312 yards, 14 TDs in his final collegiate season because, you know, it's one of these situations where legitimately we were like, how did this guy get into a professional league? You know, his college statistics really aren't all that good, but, you know, they do tryouts for these. He makes it through the tryout process. He beats out other guys that may have bigger names or whatever. And next thing you know, he's on an XFL team. Uh, so they send out invites. So they they probably get a list of quarterbacks. Obviously, guys like Ben DiNucci and A.J. McCarron, are, they're going to try their best to get them on the team. So this is a situation that I talked about yesterday. The XFL, and some people said, well, the XFL is getting a lot of attention over this this supposed scandal. Well, but it's not good attention. And, yeah, Florio makes a good point. you got legalities because there's a lot of movement around betting in this league. That's something that this, this incarnation, of course, the NFL is doing it too, but this incarnation is really trying to get people involved from the betting aspect. Well, Man, if you got a player that's giving out plays or playbooks to other teams, that raises serious questions and legalities. And that tells you right there, all the betting entities out there have frozen betting on the XFL. That is not a good look, no matter what. Okay, so uh, we'll have to see where this goes on that front. But, yeah, the fact that they're, they're pausing betting is, uh, is a yikes situation. Yeah, that could get very ugly, very uh, – actually, that could get a lot of publicity. Wade Phillips, very quickly, of course, he is the coach of the Houston Roughnecks. But I saw this and I thought, wow, he wanted to be in the NFL and he can't get a job. And I was like, are you serious right now? It was shocking. Um, I would have thought he would have been at the top of anybody's list looking for a defensive coordinator. I thought he retired and did not want to be in the league anymore. I'm wrong about that. He wants to be in that, the NFL. When Wade Phillips' XFL Houston Roughnecks were victorious in the opener, it marked his first win as a head coach since September 2010. That victory also came in Houston when Phillips was the coach of the Cowboys. Houston is where Phillips played college ball for the Cougars. It's where he was on his father's coaching staff with the Oilers. And it's where he was defensive coordinator for the Texans. But Phillips was nowhere in the NFL in 2020 or 2021. In fact, nobody hired Phillips after the Rams let the defensive coordinator go following the 2019 season. Despite helping the Los Angeles uh, Rams make the Super Bowl a year earlier. Quote, I hate to say this, but I think it's the age. It's hard to beat my record as a coordinator, so there's got to be another reason. Phillips, 75 years old, said, but that's okay. I'm glad to be doing what I'm doing. Yeah, well, he also, let's be honest, he adds some name recognition to the XFL. Uh Far to my knowledge, everybody respects Wade Phillips. Phillips' roughnecks are off to a 2 0 start, allowing the second fewest points in the eight team league. So, no surprise, this defense is going to be good. The defense leads the leagues in sacks, tackles for losses, and interceptions. The day before, Houston Mayor, the radical leftist Sylvester Turner, declared it Wade Phillips' day. Quote, to be honest, Sylvester Turner does not have a good reputation. It really should have been Houston rough next day, Phillips said. The coach said working with players is the best part of the job. They got great focus. They're trying to accomplish something, and they're looking for you to help them. There was also putting together a 51-man roster from scratch in the NFL. You draft, but you have 35, 40 players already. We had none. Phillips said there's no problem with players prioritizing and pressing scouts with stats instead of serving them. Quote, we're going to give you a chance to show what you got to do, but it's going not going to be selfish, Phillips said. That's what a team is. 
You're still happy when somebody else does well. You want all the opportunities you can get, but I'll tell them they'll be there for you. Just do what you're supposed to do. Do it well, and people will recognize it. Winning has followed Phillips. The Oilers made back-to-back AFC title games when he was on the staff. The Eagles won the 1988 NFC East title when he was Buddy Ryan's defensive coordinator, his dad, of course, from the Great Bears 85 tree. The following season, the Broncos made the Super Bowl when he was on Dan Reeves' staff. There were more playoff appearances as a member of the Texans, Broncos, Falcons, Chargers, and Rams staff, and as a head coach of three different teams. But in October 2020, he took to Twitter looking for a job. Quote, watching and waiting the league, not one team. Just looking to see if I can get an opportunity to help someone win. And in January 2021, he tweeted, I'm ready to retire from retirement. I am ready and available. Let's win. And now he's back as a head coach. That's crazy that he can't get a job. The reputation from fans and media was that he was a great defensive coordinator. Just see his master class with the with Denver in 2015, the postseason. But just all right as a head coach, even with an 82-64 and 64 record, leading the Broncos, Bills, and Cowboys to the playoffs. My niche in the NFL was defensive coordinator. My record is pretty good as a head coach. It was fun being a head coach. I didn't do terrible. For a man coaching a half a century, his passion for coaching hasn't waned at all. It's not work, Phillips said. It's a family tradition. I love doing it. His father, Bum, was the head coach of the Oilers and Saints. Bum is a legend here in Texas. And now Wade's son, Wes, is the Vikings offensive coordinator. I'm not mad because I'm not in the NFL. I'm glad I got an opportunity. That's crazy. The NFL used to be the no-fun league, and the XFL is the extra-fun league. That's pretty funny. Uh, but that's also pretty wild that nobody will give Wade Phillips a chance? Really? All these defensive coordinator positions? I'm actually kind of surprised Sean Payton didn't call Wade Phillips, to be honest with you. You know, I mean, I know he's got extensive history with the Broncos, and maybe that's why they did not. But they also rehired Vance Joseph. Now, if you ask me, who would you rather have, Wade Phillips or Vance Joseph? I'm getting the job to Wade Phillips 10 out of 10 times. Anybody else that needs a defensive coordinator, that is really surprising. That's really surprising. He thinks it's got to do with his age. I hope not. I mean, that just wouldn't bother me. I mean, I would think, you know, I'd be like, you know what? Worst case scenario, he's got two or three years if if. He seems sharp. He's doing a good job as a head coach. Uh, That might be a real miss for people in the NFL right now. Tell me what you think, Black and White Sports 2 supporters. Peace. I'm out. Till next time. Black and White Network supporters, make sure you go over and check out the Black and White Network merchandise store. 25% off USA First. 25% off USA First. Go now. Thanks for watching the show. Be sure to like, comment, and subscribe. Be sure to tune in next time on Black and White Sports.